Hi guys, um, haven't posted for a while, this is just a quick post. Um, I've read a couple of books recently um, and I really wanted to uh, recommend them. Um, they've been really good um, and they've really kind of renewed my mind and got me thinking and just enlightened me in many ways. Um, so I just wanted to share this with all of you guys um, uh, and encourage you to read them because I really do think they're good. Um, and also, uh, just I think it would be nice if people who maybe read the books or have read them in the past um, just made comments on this video on YouTube, but just to see what different people make of it, what they like, what they don't like. Um, I really like both of them, and um, the two books are here. The first one is called Follies and Fallacies in Medicine, and it's written by two guys, um, Peter uh, Skrabanek and James McCormick. And the second book. Um, I'd like to recommend is called Matters of Life and Death, Human Dilemmas in Light of the Christian Faith, and this is by John Wyatt. So these are two really um, different books. They cover completely different um, areas of medicine, um, um, but I think they're both brilliant. Um, I'm just going to go through them both quickly um, and tell you why I like them. So Follies and Fallacies in Medicine. Um, this is brilliant. Um, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll read. I'll read the blurb to you guys. See what you think. Um, it says, "How much do doctors really know? Is being overweight really bad for you? How dangerous is cholesterol? Is prevention better than cure? Alternative medicine? Are you being conned?" Um, these are just some of the questions explored in this refreshingly unique and highly readable book. Follies and Fallacies in Medicine uncovers, uncovers the current complacency prevalent in much of contemporary medical thinking, calling for rational re-examination of many established practices and suggests that a more sceptical approach to diagnosis, treatment and cure of recognised disease is necessary in an area cluttered with much dead tissue. A separate section investigates the apparent mystique surrounding alternative medical practices such as homeopathy and acupuncture and suggests that much of their therapeutic effect may be simply all in the mind. Speed, um, Peter Skrabanek and James McCormick are, lecturer, um, are lecturers and professors in the Department of Community Health in Trinity Co College, Dublin. Um, this book was fantastic. Um, it covers loads of common lies and fallacies prevalent in, in Western medicine um, and consequently a, a much of it was, was new to me and much of it was a shock to me. I think a lot of it um, many medical students could go through medical school not knowing which is kind of scary. So um, it's a real, um, a real eye opener, um, a brilliant read um, and I'd recommend it. Um, among other things it covers placebo and the placebo effect, um, whether actually using placebo as a treatment is ethical. Um, Hippocrates himself used placebo and encouraged its use. Um, so they discussed this, you know, is placebo, is it ethical to use placebo to deceive patients but in deceiving them to heal them? Um, it also covers, you know, common lies and fallacies in Western medicine, as I've said. It does. It covers diagnosis and labelling. There's a chapter on that, which includes the harm of labelling people as having a disease. Um, for example, if you tell someone they've got high blood pressure, um, there is some evidence to suggest that just by them knowing that, their health can deteriorate. Um, I know, <laughs> isn't that, isn't that mind-boggling? But you've got to read this book, seriously. Um, there's other chapters as well on prevention, um, preventative medicine, alternative medicine, and morality in medicine. So this is a really good read. Um, uh, I sh must mention, though, that this particular edition, which I read, was written in 1989, and there is more up-to-date um, editions of this book, so I'd recommend you go for the more up-to-date one. But the ISBN number of this particular one is um, 1870781023. Um, if you're interested in that book, excellent book, extremely shocking, eye-opening. And the second book I want to recommend, Matters of Life and Death. This is a book, an ethics book. Um, it's an ethical piece written by this chap here called John Wyatt. John Wyatt, he's a, um, he's a professor of perinatology and ethics, and he teaches at University College London. 
um, and he wrote this book. Um, uh, very, uh, very, very philosophical. Very interesting. Um, again, I would recommend it. He's he's a uh, the guy who writes it, John John White. He's a specialist in um, medical care of like newborn babies and stuff like that. Um, it's um, it is a Christian perspective on ethics, um, but I still think it's very much worth reading for the non-Christian. Um, as well, obviously, Christians are probably going to want to read it. Um, and uh, it, he goes through some really serious modern cases that we've had in medicine, including the case of, some of you may have heard these in the media, the case of the conjoined twins, um, the joined twins. Um, they were born to parents who were Christian. Their parents did not want them um, separated. Um, the doctors felt that it was in the best interest that they were separated. Um, because one would have a very good chance of survival, the other one would die if they were separated. However, not separating them would result in a strong chance that they both would die. So actually this went to court and against the parents' wishes, the twins were separated, one died and one lived. Interesting case. He discusses this case. He discusses another case, um, other cases about physician-assisted suicide um, and patients being taken to the Dignitas Clinic. If you're not from Europe, you might not know much about this, but in the UK, there have been many cases of patients being taken to Switzerland to Dignitas um, for their lives to be ended because um, physician-assisted suicide in the UK is currently illegal. He discusses the ethics of this and is this right and should it be allowed, so on and so forth also discusses another case about Joanne Jepson. Um, she was a woman who was looking through records and discovered that a fetus had been aborted. It was a very late term. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head how many weeks, but it was quite late term and it was aborted. And the reason it was aborted was because it had um, a cleft lip and palate. Um, it, and jo the person who discovered this herself was born with a facial deformity, so obviously a very emotive subject for this person. She took it to court because she felt that the abortion laws may be being abused to abort fetuses who were healthy and only had minor defects, um, like this, like this particular case. So he discusses that. Um, he discusses the right to refuse treatment. Um, should patients have the right to refuse treatment and consequently die? Um, when should they have the right, when should they not have the right, so on and so forth. So he goes over some of those, those cases. Another high profile case was the case of the saviour sibling here in the UK. Is it ethical if your child is going to die, say, of a disease where they can't get a bone marrow donor? Um, is it ethical that the parents um, have one of their, the, their eggs fertilised and um, cultivated so that cells can be taken from this to save the ch living child. This, this is um, this is what a saviour sibling is. That's another case mentioned. All very, very uh, mind-boggling, shocking, interesting cases. Um, I think he deals with them quite well as well. Um, other cases including the assisted suicide um, and the more assisted suicide stuff, like um, a woman recently in the UK wanted to be assisted in her suicide um, wanted her husband to take her to, I think, Dignitas, and wasn't sure if when her husband returned to the UK he would be prosecuted. Um, so she went to seek guidance on this. You know, what about that? Um, and finally, um, he um, highlights and discusses the case of a um, persistent vegetative state, um, people who are very badly um, brain damaged. Um, and only their lower brain structures function, so um, they're not conscious, they're not aware, um, uh, at least current med medical knowledge um, says so, um, but they can breathe, um, and basic bodily functions are working, such as heart rate and stuff like that, So, but they're in a vegetative state, um, and he talks about one particular case where someone was in a persistent vegetative state for three years, this went to the House of Lords in England, and eventually um, it was decided by the Lords that treatment should be withdrawn in the best interest of the patient. Consequently, um, this chap died. Was it right to withdraw treatment? If it was right, was it right to wait three years to be sure that we were doing the right thing or, you know, 
where we dilly dallying. So major issues covered in this book. That all those um, cases I've highlighted are cases he explains in much greater detail in the opening chapter of the book, and subsequently he goes through the book to, um, using these cases as examples um, and discussing the ethics. Great book. Really want to recommend it. Anyway, guys, um, looking forward to posting a bit more. Got my Easter holidays coming up. Um, and thanks. Thanks for your encouragement. Thanks again. Cheers.